All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let me just check my audio, make sure you guys can hear everything all right. All right. All right, guys, today is going to be primarily about the, the meat and potatoes of selling uh, health insurance to the leads that we've got in the system and, um, and how to approach those leads and, and uh, the follow-up and everything that goes into it, right? And uh, I'm gonna go over some scripts. I've got some scripts laid out. We'll have those loaded into Lead Master here uh, very soon. And if you guys missed yesterday's training, let me show you where you find those leads in Lead Master. So first of all, you know, as we discussed, we've got a lot of different lead sources, right? A lot of different lead sources, internet leads, telemarketed leads. Um, we're gonna be beta testing live transfers here within the next week or so. We are doing the ad campaigns on social media and digital to get the uh, organic leads going. So we will be generating those in a very short period of time. And then obviously we have our database of leads uh, that we've acquired over the years. So on your lead master, when you go into lead acquisition and click on buy a network lead, you're gonna see all the leads that are available in the states that you are able to sell in. Um, you know, if for some reason you're only seeing leads available in your home state and you have a lot of non-resident licenses or you know, even a couple of non-resident licenses, then obviously, you know, reach out to Joe, reach out to myself, let us know and we'll make sure that we get your lead master updated so you can see all the leads that are available in the states that you are licensed in. But we're really gonna pick this apart today and break down for you the presentation and what it sounds like. Because you know, if you were on the call on Monday, I was talking about what numbers to drive, right? You know, it's not, it's not the it's not the end game. It's not about how much money you want to make. All right. Ultimately, we know that's the direction you're you're heading in, right? You need to make X amount of dollars to pay your bills, to live your lifestyle. You know, you, you obviously want to continue to build on that. But in the beginning, when you're just getting started, that, uh, you know, it's not, you don't want to focus on the dollars as much as you want to focus on making the presentations, all right? So if you make the presentations, then you're going to make the dollars, I promise you. Uh, but it is an activity game, all right? There's, it's, it's, it's a numbers game. It's an activity game. It's how many people do you need to contact in order to make a presentation? So I'm gonna go over the scripts with you guys and how to approach each different lead source. Then we will go over, um, here, let me pull it up here, I got it for you. Uh, so we'll go over the intro on each different lead source. We're also going to go over the qualifying questions, right? How do you qualify someone properly? Uh, we're gonna go over the presentation so once you get somebody that um, you know is you know willing to let you bend their ear, and uh, and and what the presentation should sound like based on the product that you're going in with, or based on what the product that you're going to prescribe to the customer is, uh, we'll go over overcoming objections. Um, so this is you know this is basic sales training. All right. Now everything that we're going to go over. All these scripts are pretty much written in a fashion, um, you know, it's, in other words, it's exactly what I would say. So it's, they're written on a, in a word for word fashion, all right? So, um, but in, at the end of the day, when, one thing I want you guys to understand is when you're selling, okay, um, it doesn't matter what product you're selling. I don't care if you're selling a car, if you're selling insurance, it doesn't matter. It's not about what you say, okay? It's 100% how you say it. So there's no magical script that we can give you, just like there's no magical lead source that we can give you. There's no magic leads out there that is gonna take your closing percentage from here to here. Only talent's gonna take you from here to here, right? And there's no magical script that I can give you um, that will make your sales go from here to here. So again, that is your talent uh, and your sales ability that's gonna be the difference maker. All right, now I can give you some good one-liners and, and um, the flow and exactly the format that the conversation should flow in and you know, the, the, the way you wanna direct the traffic to ultimately get the outcome that you want. 
But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to how you say it, all right, and your uh, personality and your sales ability, and that's ultimately what's going to lead to you being successful, all right? Uh, so with all that being said, let's just go ahead and dive right in. Let's talk about leads, all right? Let's first talk about the lead sources, and then we'll pick them apart, all right? And again, I want to stress to everybody the different lead sources that we have currently, the lead sources that we are working on as we speak that are uh, either in beta right now or are, go are going to be in beta very soon. Uh, but right now, what we've got is, again, we've got some you know unlimited free leads for you guys. We've got our database. We do have um, you know deals with uh, different lead vendors where we can pull you know small business owner lists you know by the thousands. You know we can go and get a list of small business owners if you want to work small business owners specifically in your area, uh, or if there's a state that you've had success in in the past, you want to work in a certain state. Maybe maybe you've done your homework and you know uh, what state you're licensed in where our products are the most competitive and you wanna focus on that state, we can get you lists uh, and data for small business owners in any state, all right? Um, and we also, you know, and also in the, in the free leads is gonna be leads that we have at one point touched. We've either purchased them or we've generated them through our data list. And now we have more, you know, we've gathered more information. We, they're in our system, uh, but we just haven't closed them yet for whatever reason. Right, because they haven't they haven't been touched at the right time yet. They haven't talked to the right agent yet. They haven't been offered the right product yet. So we've got these free leads, okay? And we can give you unlimited free leads. All right, work our database, work uh, a small business owner list, and as we talked about earlier in the week, we also have live dial uh, live dialer auto dialers available. All right, so we can provide you with an auto dialer, uh, which is. You know, one of the better auto, auto dialers on the market right now, it'll ring up to four lines at one time. Most agents just let it ring at about two lines at a time because when they crank it up to four lines, they can't keep up. All right, so our auto dialer works very well to cut down on the time, um, you know, the downtime, the in-between calls time, right? So a lot of times you're, you know, you call a lead, no answer. You call a lead, no answer. You call a lead, they answer. You know, you get rejected. You call a lead, no answer. You call a lead, you get rejected. So the auto dialer really, you know, in between those calls, there's no downtime. So if it's five or six dials that it takes you before you get a live person on the phone, you're dialing freehand, that auto dialer is going to do that for you. All right. So that's the advantage to working with an auto dialer. You know, some agents make 150 calls a day freehand, but on an auto dialer, they'll crank it up and make 600 calls a day. Obviously, you're going to, uh, be working a little bit more efficiently with the auto dialer. If you want an auto dialer, access to an auto dialer, you let Joe know, we'll get you set up. We do monitor those things pretty tight. You know, we're paying a monthly subscription for it. We're willing to give it to you. If, you, if you're using it, you can, you can have it, you know, because ultimately you're going to be, you know, you're going to be making money. You're going to be making sales. So if you need it, you want an auto dialer, we have the uh, opportunity for you to have an auto dialer so you can burn through some of these free leads even quicker, right? So we're going to talk about the script and how to approach the free leads, um, both the leads that are in our database that we have extensive information on, and also the leads that are uh, contacted through the auto dialer. So in other words, you're calling a business code, right? Then we've got our under 65A leads. And I'm going to, again, reiterate as we go so you guys have a very clear understanding at the end of this training what these leads are, where they were generated, how they were generated, when they were generated, and, uh, and exactly how to approach them. So the under 65 A leads, which are $1 lead credits each, again, you earn lead credits by writing business. The under 65 A leads are shared telemarketed leads. So we share them with other agencies. They're shared telemarketed leads and they were generated within 90 days. Okay, so when we buy them, now, you know, there's a batch of about 500 in there. I think we bought 1,000, um, you know, like a month ago. So, you know, obviously some of those leads in there could be up to four months, you know, generated four months ago. But they are shared. We're competing with uh, other agencies that are buying these leads as well. No problem. I like our odds. Anytime we're competing with other agencies, I like our odds because I know we offer the best products, right? I know that our agents are trained to 
be professionals and sell their service first and foremost, all right, and then back it up, you know, they, and provide perfect customer service. And that's how you build a book of business as time goes on through being a professional, uh, good customer service. You know, I've got clients that are on my books, you know, for the last five, six, seven, eight years, you know, some of them, I, I don't even know how long they've been on the books, all right? But they continue to call me when they have questions about their health insurance. And because I answer the phone, I get to keep them on my book. So anyway, these under 65A leads generated within 90 days, they're telemarketed leads. They're great leads, guys. I mean, these are people that buy their own health insurance. They've been vetted for income. They've been vetted for pre-existing conditions. They take phone calls about their health insurance, right? They take the phone call, um, <clears throat> you know, and, uh, uh, and you have a lot of information on the lead too. A lot of times you're gonna have who their carrier is. You're gonna have what they're paying. Um, so we have all that information on these A-leads. So you got a lot of info of somebody that buys their own health insurance, takes phone calls about health insurance, and, you know, is vetted for income, they make over 35 grand or more, and they're vetted for pre-existing, they have no majors, all right? So that is, a, that is a killer lead in our business. I mean, imagine, I use the example all the time, if you're selling face cream, right? Imagine you're selling face cream, and you have a, a, a lead that was generated within 90 days of a person that buys face cream, right? And, uh, you know, you have the brand that they use now, you know what they're paying for the face cream that they use now, right? And you know that uh, they take phone calls regarding face cream. They'll listen to a face cream sales rep. I mean, how could you ask for a better lead? I mean, that's the kind of lead. You know, I, I, people complain about leads all the time. I don't understand it, you know? So these are people that buy their own health insurance and they take phone calls. So that's an under 65 A lead, all right? It's a great lead. Um, we have, we're going to skip the Medicare leads, the over 65 leads. We have internet A leads, all right? Internet A leads, those are leads that come in in real time, all right? So when there's, um, uh, you know, a lead generated off of our vendor, you know, it's, it's automatic. It goes directly into the lead master system. Now, that lead, you got to get on right away, okay? That lead was generated within minutes, and again, they are shared. So you got to be, you know, quick to the draw. Be the first agent on that um, is going to be your best, uh, best bet, you know, for success, especially for a one call close uh, with those leads. All right. We're going to skip recruiting leads. We have internet leads that were generated within 90 days. All right. So just like the, um, the under 65 A leads that were generated within 90 days, that's the internet leads. Okay. So internet A leads are, are real time. They're generated immediately. Internet leads are generated within 90 days. And again, they are shared, all right? Um, and then the Philly Quoted A leads, which I'm gonna change the name of that. Uh, the Philly Quoted A leads, we're gonna change it to uh, exclusive telemarketed leads because that's what they are. They are exclusive telemarketed leads. We had half a dozen or so of those in the system this morning. So those go the quickest, all right? Because what those are is those are exclusive telemarketed leads that have been generated within the last couple of days. I mean, very recently generated. We don't share them with any other agents. They are our leads, and um, and uh, um, you know, and 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 there's obviously a way to you know there's a way to approach all of these different leads. All right, guys. So. So that's the lead program right now. That's the lead program that's set, that's done. We can always uh, you know, kind of turn these ad cam uh, lead campaigns on and off as we go. As you can see right now, we've got uh, you know, almost 1,400 people in the system that have been shopping for health insurance in the last 90 days. We've got another 500 um, under 65 A leads in the system of people that have taken phone calls about their health insurance in the last 90 days. You know, these are great leads. You know, we had another half a dozen freshly telemarketed leads today. Again, those go very quickly. Um, so, you know, we, we, can, we can turn these internet leads on and off as we see, uh, you know, agents working them. So again, th that's the lead program. We also are beta testing live transfers, which I mentioned on the sales meeting, I think, uh, or in the training, one of the two meetings yesterday. We're beta testing live transfers. 
and we're also rolling out our digital marketing uh, organic lead generation campaign. So we've got, um, you know, we've got the funnels going. We're going to be generating leads through social media, and we'll be putting those leads into the Lead Master system at probably a three to five dollar lead credit price point. We'll see. You know, we got to see how much uh, how much it costs us per lead to get. So. Um, so that's what we've got right now and, you know, what's to come and what we're working on. Today, we're going to train on the scripts, all right? We're going to talk about how to approach each different lead source, all right? And then how to present um, each product, okay? How to build your case to present Philadelphia American or National General. Those are the two carriers that we're going to focus on today with the presentation, again, being, you know, probably you know, 85, 90% of our business right now being those two carriers. So, um, all right, so let's get into the scripts, all right? You guys saw the lead sources. Let's get into the scripts. And here we go. So there's, I put it all on one script, all right? Because eventually, you know, you guys shouldn't be using a script, right? Obviously, you know, the, the, if you do something, uh, you know, enough times and, and you know to do something uh enough times with this a good enough times probably you know i mean three to five days if you're pounding the phones three to five days um you know you shouldn't really need the script i mean it should really be something that's just a guide and you kind of have an idea of what to say when the when the call answers the phone i'm going to go over all that so when you uh and the reason i do this is so you guys understand how these leads were generated when they were generated and how you can approach them, all right? That's important. So let's talk about the intro, all right? So my, my presentation is basically four steps, all right? It's an intro, okay? It's qualifying, it's presenting, and then closing, all right? Those are the four steps to a good presentation. Intro, qualify, present, uh, present and educate, and then close, all right, those four steps. So right now we're just talking about the intro, all right? What do you say when somebody answers the phone on a specific lead source that you're calling on? So let's talk about the free leads first, all right? Now this would be a free lead, somebody that's been in our system, right? And you wanna approach it as a follow-up call, right? Because it's somebody that we have talked to in the past. Hi, Jim. Notice I'm not asking, is Jim there or is this Jim? I just assume, that the name of the person on the lead is the person answering the phone. Hi, Jim, how you doing? Uh, hey, it's Drew with BMT. He's gonna say, who, what, who the hell is that? You're gonna go, BMT, we spoke, oh man, I don't know, several months ago now uh, about health insurance. I was just checking in to see if there was an opportunity to earn your business this year. Are you still 46 years old? Is your email still jim at yahoo.com? Is your zip code still? So what I'm doing is I'm introducing myself, right? I tell him why I'm calling and without giving him a second to respond and not opening him up for an objection, I'm automatically going into a question, um, a close-ended question where, you know, in most cases, the answer that I'm gonna get is automatically yes, right? So, hey, hey, you know, again, it's a follow-up call and I'm, you know, and you guys are gonna see a theme as we go through these intros, all right? And I'll tell you what, this, after we go through all these intros, I'm gonna tell you what the common denominator is uh, for all of these intros and for you to intros, all right? But if you're calling a free lead that is somebody that we talked to at some point, you know, you wanna handle it as a follow-up call. Hey, Jim, how you doing, man? It's Drew with BMT. He's gonna go, who, what, where, what? Oh, BMT, we spoke, you know, I don't know, a few, a few months back now about your health insurance. Uh, I wasn't, you know, able to help you at the time, unfortunately, but I just wanted to check in and see if there's an opportunity here to earn your business. Is your zip code still 60008? Right? Well, yes, it is. Great. And you're still 40 years old. Your wife's still 40 years old. You know, did you guys make any other decisions on health insurance at that time? Blah, blah, blah. Right? You go and we'll get into qualifying in a minute. But that's the intro, guys. It's real simple. All right, you tell them who you are and why you're calling, and you go right into verifying the information that you have on the lead or qualifying them, all right? Um, so that's, you know, that would be handled like a follow-up call, right? Or you have another 
uh, route you could take. And this would be more if you're calling a business code, right? So if we set you up with an auto dialer and you're just burning through calling business owners, right? Um, it's going to be more of a, it's going to be a little more of a sales pitch up front as opposed to just a follow-up call, seeing if you can help them out. But it would sound like this. Hi, Jim. Again, you want to assume that the person answering the phone is the person that you're calling for. Because what, what happens a lot of times is, you know, agents will call somebody and they'll say, hey, is Drew there? And I might do this too sometimes. So I don't know a number, I answer it, you know, say hello and they go, yes, is Drew Ellison there? I'm like, no, he's unavailable. Click. You know, a lot of people are going to do that even though you're talking to them. All right. So anytime you call somebody, you want to automatically assume that they are the person that you're trying to get in touch with. All right. So you'll call and say, hi, hi, Jim. Hey, Jim, my name is Drew with BMT. How are you today? All right. Ask that question. Slow it down a little bit. So many times agents are so quick to just spew the pitch out that they don't slow it down. All right. That could be a huge difference maker. That could be the difference between you getting, uh, you know, you, you getting a quote out uh, every five calls or you getting a quote out every 20 calls. Excuse me. So slow it down. All right. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim, it's Drew with BMT. How are you today? Most people are going to say, I'm fine. How are you? Right. I'm going to say, man, I'm great. Thanks for asking. Listen, now I go into my pitch. Why am I calling? Who I am? Why am I calling? Listen, I'm an expert health insurance broker. That's in, that is stressed. Expert. Right. Small business owners like working with experts. Okay? They want to work with somebody who's an expert in the health insurance field, just like they're an expert in the cupcake making field or the the, the you know the auto body field, whatever. Listen, I'm an expert health insurance broker. I'm very passionate about working with small business owners to find the best product to fit their needs. I'd love the opportunity to earn your business and send you out a quick quote. Is your email this? Boom. And in most cases, you're going to have their email because the email will be, you know, part of the data that we pull. Is your email this, right? Um, you know, so your automatic, again, no pause time, no pause time from the intro to going into qualifying them. You don't pause. All right. I'm going to say that again. Hey, hi, Jim. Hey, Jim, it's Drew with BMT. How are you today? Great. I, I'm great, man. Thanks for asking. Listen, I'm an expert health insurance broker. I'm very passionate about working with small business owners to find the best product to fit their needs. I'd love the opportunity to earn your business and send you out a quick quote. What are you doing? You're literally just asking for the opportunity to earn their business. All right. Why, why would that work? Because most say most small business owners today are that they'll appreciate that. They'll be appreciative of you, uh, you know, calling them to ask for the opportunity to earn their business. Because these are the scripts we've used for years. They work. But again, it's how you say it. It's not what you say, but it's totally how you say it. And you have to say it as confident and as, um, as nonchalant almost as if you were talking to your parents, your brothers, your best friend, right? That's how you have to talk. If you change your voice when you're making these calls, you're going to be dead in the water already. Okay, they will, they will sniff that out. Oh, this is just some call center, you know, calling me. Blah, I don't want to deal with it right? You have, to, you have to be as natural and um, as confident as humanly possible. And that really is the difference maker. Like I said in the beginning, there's no magic lead. There's no magic script, all right? It, com it, it comes down to how you say it, all right? Not what you say, but how you say it. So if you come across as confident and you come across as excited about your business, then you're going to get that on the other end of the phone, all right? So those are the free leads, okay? That's the intro to the free leads. Very simple. If you're calling free leads, use one of those two intros and practice saying it as natural and as excited and as confident as humanly possible, right? Those are the keys. All right, let's talk about internet leads, okay? Internet leads. Now, this is somebody that was shopping for health insurance in the last 90 days, all right? And we know that they got bombarded, right, 90 days ago. So you can see it's a little bit more of a mouthful, all right, but you got to do a little bit more of selling yourself, all right? 
Again, I'm gonna assume whoever answers the phone is that person. Hi, right, Jim. Hey, this is Drew with BMT. How are you doing today? Slow it down again. I'm fine, how are you? Listen, I'm great, thanks for asking. Listen, your name came across my desk as someone shopping for health insurance recently. I know when you inquire like that, you usually get bombarded with calls. I was just following up to see if you got that taken care of or were you still looking for something? You know, oh, I got that, I'm all set, man, thank you. Well, great, What which plan did you go with, right? And you know, you're not asking that question, what plan did you go with to be nosy, right? You're still looking for an opportunity to help that person, okay? You wanna keep an eye out now, you don't say this, okay? When anything I have in parentheses is not for you to say when you're talking uh, to the uh, prospect, all right? So you wanna keep an eye out for any off exchange carriers. The only plans you should lay off are people that have marketplace plans that are fully subsidized or heavily subsidized because you're not gonna be able to beat a major med rate that somebody's paying 20 bucks a month for, right? Or group plan, somebody has a group plan through their company and it's totally affordable for them. And obviously you're gonna to have to ask those questions to know the answers, right? So what plan did you get set up with? That's a good question to ask right away if they say I already got it taken care of. Or you could say, let me ask you, if you needed to call the broker that you bought your plan through, do you know their name and number right now? That's so important in today's industry, all right? Understand how these internet leads are being sold their policies. They are being sold their policies by call center agents, by um, uh, remote agents that you know, are captive, and don't uh, you know have have this working off a predictive dialer? You know, um, so a lot of times these agents they're not they're not selling what's in the best interest for the customer. They simply want to make a deal. They just want to get the commission, right? And a lot of times they don't tell you, uh, you know, how to get back in touch with them. And it blows my mind how much business these organizations write. All right, so I've used this in the past. Let me ask you something. If you had to call the broker that you bought uh, this policy from, could you get in touch with them, right? Um, use these questions to spark interest in talking to you, a professional, all right? Ultimately, what you guys are gonna be selling is yourself, all right? We don't design health insurance plans, right? Not yet anyway, right? It's part of the vision down the road, but we're not designing health insurance plans right now. So, so, we don't determine what's on the market and what's available. We can simply tell the customer what the best option is. And if we expect that customer to listen to us, then we have to sell ourselves better than any other plan out there. All right, so ultimately what you're selling is yourself. All right, um, listen, Jim, I know you probably heard, of, uh, uh, heard your share of health insurance presentations recently, but I'd love the opportunity to earn your business. I don't know if I'm the first agent you've spoken with or the 31st agent, but I know I'm the best. Or you, you know, if, you don't, if you're not comfortable saying that, you can say, I don't know if I'm the first agent you spoke with or the 31st, but I know I'm a professional, okay? If you're, not in, if you're not confident enough or comfortable enough to say, I don't know if I'm the first agent or the 31st agent, but I know I'm the best. If you're not ready to say that, all right? You can say, I don't know if I'm the first agent or the 31st agent you talk to, but I know I'm a professional, all right? At least have confidence in the fact that you are a professional and you probably are the best agent that this customer could be doing business with right now, all right? I also know there are a lot of agents out there pushing products for the commission instead of what's best for you, the customer, all right? I promise I won't waste your time, Jim. If you got a good deal and good coverage, I'll gladly tell you that you're good and go on about my business looking for the people that I can help. So the info I have here is accurate, correct? Your zip code is boom, boom, boom. You see how long that kind of takes to, you know, those internet leads are tricky. You know, again, you, you, get, you, gotta, you gotta anticipate going into that lead that the person is beyond frustrated and, and they're tired of hearing about health insurance options and, and if they got it taken care of in their mind, it's off the table and they don't wanna worry about it anymore. Okay. But what you're looking for is, you know, if they, if they tell you, yeah, I got it taken care of, you ask, well, great, what plan did you wind up with? Oh, I, I got a Freedom Life plan. Man, you got to help those people, all right? You got to help those people. That's a bad product. And it was sold to them deceiving, deceivingly, 
All right, you got to help those people. They tell you that they have, uh, you know, I got set up with a health sharing, a ministry sharing. You know, you got to help those people. All right, that's not insurance, that's sharing. It's not guaranteed to cover you when you need it the most. And if the company had a bad quarter, you might be one of the claims that they decide not to cover. And it's in writing that it's not guaranteed. Okay, you need real health insurance. You need the signed contract with the multi-billion dollar organization that states that if you get sick or injured, you're covered, okay? So you gotta keep, you know, when you ask, hey, what'd you wind up with? Know where you can beat, um, you know, what they currently have, all right? So you're looking for off exchange carriers. The only plan, the only time you should lay off is, you know, if they have a marketplace plan that's heavily subsidized, or they have a very affordable group rate. But you're gonna find those people that have marketplace plans that are paying too much. You can help those people. You're gonna find those people that have group plans that are literally paying, you know, three, four, five, six hundred dollars per paycheck. Their paycheck is getting friggin', you know, destroyed because of their health insurance. You're gonna find those people. Okay, you can help those people. All right. So you know, the internet lead is, uh, you know, it's a little different approach, right? Now, and I'm going to get to this too, there is still opportunity to earn their business if they have a marketplace plan that's fully subsidized or if they have a group plan that's totally affordable. There's still opportunities there. What about supplements? What about critical illness? We'll talk about that later, all right? Right now, we're just on intros, okay? So you want to introduce introduce yourself tell them why you're calling tell them what you can do for them and go directly into verifying them all right so that's internet leads all right so about internet a leads much more simple right an internet a lead is again somebody that's shopping right now okay they're shopping right now hi jim hey this is drew with bmt how are you today Great, man. Thanks for asking. Uh, so I see you're shopping for health insurance. Let me just verify some of the info. We'll take a look at uh, what makes the most sense for you. Is your zip code this? You go right into it. Don't waste your time with anything else. Go right into it. You get somebody on the phone that is an internet A lead. They're shopping right now. Hey, I know you're shopping for health insurance. I'm the broker following up to get you the info. Is your zip code this? Okay, you go right into it. Don't hesitate. Very simple right? But again, a lot of agents don't know, uh, you know, how to approach each different lead source. So that's why we do this, right? So you go right into it on an internet A lead. Ultimately, after the intro, the presentation is the exact same for every lead source. It doesn't matter. So once we get to the presentation, it's totally uniformed across the board. The intro is the only thing that's different when you're calling different lead sources, all right? Now let's talk about under 65 A leads. What is an under 65 A lead? That is your shared telemarketed lead that has been generated within the last 90 days. And I know for a fact these leads are shared with US health advisor agents that are selling Freedom Life Insurance, okay? You hear that Freedom Life Insurance plan or US health advisors or even Cigna, because a lot of times they sell it as a Cigna policy because they're, you know, it's a Cigna PPO plan, you know? If you hear that, you, you should have dollar signs in your eyes because you can beat that with price and coverage, all right? Um, all right, so under 65 A leads, again, telemarketed leads generated within 90 days, they are shared. Hi, John. Hey, it's Drew with BMT. How are you? I'm, I'm acting as if I've talked to this guy before because I know he's taken calls in the last 90 days, right? So I'm acting as if I've talked to him. I've been, you know, I was one of the guys that he talked to within the last 90 days. Simple as that. Hey, John, it's Drew with BMT. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm great. How are you? Great. Thanks for asking. You know, and you're not going to assume right away that he remembers you. Okay. You're going you're gonna to assume that he doesn't remember you. Yeah, just, we spoke a while back, uh, you know, taking a look at some health insurance options. I think we weren't, you know, uh, able to earn your business then, but we're hoping for another shot at it. Uh, there's some new exciting plans that have recently hit the market, and they're extremely affordable with great coverage, low deductibles, nationwide PPOs. Anyway, is your zip code still 60008? You go right into it. Are you still 46, or did you have a birthday? 
right? You're gonna have that information on the lead, right? That's why these leads are gold. They're gold, all right? Agents here in the office, they quote one out of five. They call five of these leads, one of them is taking a quote, all right? It's a pipeline building, all right? <clears throat> you wanna build your pipeline. So the under 65A leads, again, telemarketed leads generated within 90 days, you wanna handle it like a follow-up call, all right? And you, and you, you know, this is kind of, uh, you know, written to illustrate that maybe you talk to somebody with our company, but you know, you can change the wording just the same. We spoke a while back about taking a look at your health insurance options. I know I wasn't able to earn your business then, but I, I was hoping for another shot at it. There's some new exciting plans that have recently hit the market, blah, blah, blah. Is your zip code still this? All right. After you tell them who you are and why you're, why you're calling, you immediately want to go into verifying the information that you have and qualifying them, all right? The pause, right, and, and, you're, and when you pause, what you're doing is you're asking for permission to continue. Well, then you're not leading the conversation anymore, are you, right? A, a good salesperson leads the conversation till they ultimately get the outcome that they want, right? If you are, um, you know, pausing and asking and, 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 and effectively asking for their permission to proceed with the presentation, number one, you're not leading the conversation anymore, but more importantly, number two, you've just opened yourself up for an objection, which in most cases you're gonna get, aren't you? Right, you're gonna get an objection 100% of the time on just about every deal that you ever write. Is, is there ever gonna be a deal that is just, flawless from introing, presenting, uh, you know, qu introing, qualifying, presenting, and closing, that's just, you know, probably not. You know, I can probably count on two hands how many times that's happened in my career. And maybe, maybe I don't get objections, but I certainly will get questions. Okay, people are always gonna have more questions, all right? So handle it like a follow-up call and, and go directly into qualifying them. Don't open yourself up for an objection. If you say, hey, is this John? Hey, it's Drew with BMT, how you doing? Listen, we spoke a while back uh, and we were taking a look at some of your health insurance options. I know I wasn't able to help you then, but I was hoping for another shot at it. There's some new exciting plans that have hit the market. They're totally affordable, low deductibles. Would that be okay? Nah, now's not the good time. No, nah, I don't have time. Why would you do that? When you could say, is your zip code still this? And get a yes, and get a yes answer, right? Those are that's what you're always looking for is those yes answers, okay? When you present, when we get to the presentation, you're gonna see how you build your airtight case to lead them to the policy that you want them to buy, all right? All right, so that's under 65 A lead intro, Philly quoted leads. We're gonna change the name of those to exclusive telemarketed leads. Those are generated you know, within the last week. Actually, the ones that we had in the system today, they were generated yesterday. So very uh, recently, they were generated and they're truly exclusive to you, right? Hi, John. Hey, John Drew with BMT, how you doing? Great, thanks for asking. Listen, you spoke with a rep of mine the other day regarding some health insurance information on the broker that's following up. Just need to verify, this is your zip code, boom, boom, boom. And you go right into it, all right? You go right into it. Simple intro, right? Very simple. You're not expecting an objection because they did talk to somebody recently. But you gotta, do the, you gotta have the same approach when you're calling any of the other leads, all right? Live transfers, I threw that in there. Again, we're doing a beta test, it's real simple. Once you guys take a live transfer, you introduce yourself, you tell them, you're the, I'm the broker that's gonna help you out today. How are you doing? Great, let me verify your info and you get right into it. You get right down to business, all right? Don't ask them about their home field football team. Don't ask, you know, in the beginning of these calls is not the time to build rapport. Okay, the time to build rapport, you're gonna have plenty of time to build rapport, trust me. Especially Joe said, I remember Joe mentioned on Monday that the average uh, sale now takes 27 contacts, uh, which was the news to me. And we've been preaching 12 contacts, but I guess the new, the new number is 27 contacts. You're gonna have plenty of time to build rapport along the way. 
Now, up front is not the time to build rapport. All right. So you get a live transfer, you get right down to business. All right. And then, you know, as your follow up game, you know, you build rapport. And hopefully it's not too extensive the follow up game on the live transfers. All right. Live transfers, uh, internet leads, exclusive telemarket leads should be a much quicker sales uh, uh, cycle than, you know, somebody that we talked to a year ago and you're reaching out to them again, right? Because it's about hitting them at the right time. Um, all right, and then organically generated, which we are working on. We're gonna be launching some funnels this week. Uh, we've got a five-day cruise that we're gonna be able to give away. Uh, and so we'll do it, we'll, we're gonna launch a marketing campaign for people to get a free health insurance quote and be entered into a raffle to earn to win a five-day cruise. And so we're hoping that will generate some leads for us. As they're generated, we'll be shoving them into Leadmaster. Um, and you guys will be able to buy them with lead credits and call on them and say, hi, Jim. Uh, my name's Drew with BMT. How are you? Great. Uh, so I understand you're interested in getting a health insurance quote. Let me just verify. This is your information. And before they become a lead, they're going to fill out a questionnaire. So we will have the information that we need automatically to run them a quote. We want to call them and, you know, pitch the product to them, right? We don't just want to take their information, send them out a quote and hope they buy, right? We want to get on them, all right? So we'll, we'll start launching that. We're going to launch that funnel this week and hopefully we start to generate some leads, uh, you know, as early as next week and you guys will start to see those flowing into Leadmaster, all right? If you have lead credits, all right? So those are the intros, guys. You know, again, learn them, practice them, be familiar with them. If you know what the lead is and when the lead was generated, you should know how to approach them, okay? All right, so that's the intro, all right? The next step is qualifying them. You got to qualify everyone. What's the information that you need in order to run a quote, okay? You need the zip code. You need the birth date of everybody to be insured. You need to know if the uh, primary or spouse is a tobacco user, right? And you wanna ask, <clears throat> does anyone take any medications for anything or see the doctor often for anything? No, we're good, we're healthy. Or yeah, well, so-and-so's on high blood pressure pills or so-and-so's on thyroid medication or blah, 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 right? No heart attacks, strokes, cancers, or diabetes. Nope, we're good, okay? Nobody's pregnant, nope, we're good. Right, you gotta you gotta know that information, and and guys, if you come across that, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, you wanna you know tell them, you know, hey, unfortunately, I don't know if there's any options for you, but hey, I I will call you during open enrollment. We'll look at the marketplace options because hey, if they've had cancer or heart attack or stroke or they're an insulin dependent diabetic, you know, their best option is to be on a marketplace plan. They need a policy that's gonna cover their pre-existing condition, right? The off-exchange plans don't cover pre-existing conditions, do they, right? So be an agent that is able to terminate a conversation quickly because I've seen agents that are like, oh, I got this person who's interested in you know, getting a quote, but they didn't ask all the questions that they needed to up front, and then all of a sudden they're you know, a 400 pound uh, you know, blood pressure, cholesterol, and an insulin diabetic, and they're overweight, you know, extremely overweight, 400 pounds. Well, we can't do anything with that customer right now, unfortunately, all right? They need to be on a marketplace plan, all right? So if you do a good job qualifying up front, you're going to do a good job of finding the people that you can help today, and that's what it's all about. And along the way, you're going to find plenty of people that you can't help today, and if you choose to be an agent that works in the marketplace during open enrollment, then you can help that customer come open enrollment, all right? And then there's a lot of agents out there that don't want anything to do with Obamacare plans. They just sell off exchange plans. So if they come across somebody they can't help, they just simply tell them, unfortunately, the products that I offer are not the best option for you. I wish you the best, all right? But if you don't qualify, uh, do a good job of qualifying up front you risk wasting some of your time down the road, okay? And time you guys, you know, can't afford to waste. You gotta spend your time finding the buyers. All right, so no heart attacks, strokes, cancers, or diabetes. Do you currently, uh, do you currently have coverage, right? 
Uh, how long is it? You don't have coverage. How long has it been since you had coverage? Right? Well, it's been a year. Well, you know, it's been this long, that long. I lost it six months ago. Right? Uh, who's your health insurance through now? Yes, I do have coverage. Great. Who's your carrier? What's your premium? What's your deductible? Anything you can tell me about your current policy? What are your likes and dislikes about your plan? Uh, what has been your experience since the Affordable Care Act became law? Is there any specific? Uh, so is there anything specific that you look for in a health insurance policy? All right, that question right there may tell you whether or not you're going to pitch National General, or you're going to pitch Philadelphia American. Right? Is there anything specific that you look for in a health insurance plan? Some people are going to say, "I want doctor visits covered." You know, diagnostic testing, my physical once a year, the things that I'm going to use it for, I want covered. Great. Philadelphia American. Or somebody might say, I want catastrophic coverage. Uh, I don't mind having a high deductible. I just want to cover the things I can't pay for. Great. National General. Right. But you don't know that if you don't ask. So do a good job of qualifying. All right. And that's qualifying on the upfront. Okay. Do a good job of qualifying up front so you don't have any issues on the back end when it comes time to present. All right? So that's qualifying. Now, once you've got somebody that you've given the intro to, that you have um, you've qualified them and you've determined that they are our kind of customer. There's somebody that we can do some business with. We can help this person, right? <clears throat> so you're gonna present to them. Now, what, when I'm, what I'm doing while I'm presenting this is I'm actually taking the information that I just gathered, taking all the qualifying information, okay? Zip code, birth date, I'm taking all that information and I'm putting it into the quoting platform that I'm going to quote. So if I'm quoting National General, I'm plugging their demographic information in to get a quote on National General. If I'm quoting Philadelphia American, I'm putting their demographic information on the Philly platform to get a quote from Philadelphia American, all right? But simultaneously, as I'm doing that, I'm, this is the presentation that I'm giving. And this presentation is my airtight case as to why I'm about to present what I'm going to present. All right. So my presentation is two parts. All right. The first part is to educate the customer. All right. I first want to educate the customer uh, as to what the options are, what's available. That's what I want to educate them on. What's available. All right. And then my second part of the presentation is I want to prescribe what I believe is the best option for them. Okay, so I'm going to educate them on what's available and then I'm going to prescribe what I believe is the best option. So this would be if I'm gonna present a limited med plan, okay? While I'm pulling up this quote, Jim, let me just briefly give you an idea of what's available on the health insurance market. First, you have Obamacare. Obamacare is what people buy when they need a plan that covers pre-existing conditions. Now the challenges that people will run into with an Obamacare plan is usually the cost, okay? The premiums are ridiculous and the networks, uh, more than 90% of the plans through Obamacare are HMOs, which means you don't have the freedom to pick your doctors and hospitals. The second option would be a plan outside of Obamacare. Now the advantages to going with a plan outside of Obamacare is number one, the cost, okay? And you're going to say, you know, you're going to save money 100% of the time on the premium with a plan outside of Obamacare. And number two is the networks. These plans are all nationwide PPOs that will allow you to pick and choose your doctors and hospitals of your choice. Why is that important? Why is it important to have a PPO? Might not be that important for somebody who, um, you know, just wants to pick a primary care physician. You go get an HMO, have a primary care physician all day. It's not that important, right? But if you need to have brain surgery, right, or, or, or heart surgery, don't you want to go to the best neurosurgeon or the best cardiac uh, surgeon in the country? And you have the option to do that when you have a nationwide PPO, right? Because I, I think the number is 18, 18 or 19 of the top hospitals in the country 
are in the PPO networks that we offer, all right? So these plans are nationwide PPOs that allow you to pick the doctors and hospitals for your choice. Now, there are two options when choosing a plan outside of Obamacare. And you might even want to throw in there too, you might even want to throw in there too and get their buy-in right there, all right? And say, does that make sense? Does it make, now there's two options on the health insurance marketplace. You got Obamacare, which is high cost, poor networks, right? And you have non-Obamacare plans, which 100% of the time you're going to save on the money and you're going to have access to a nationwide uh, network. Does it make sense to go with a plan outside of Obamacare? Yes, it does. Okay. You throw that question in there. So you're getting their buy-in. You're directing the conversation. You're getting the buy-in as you're taking them through the presentation. Yeah, it makes sense to go with a plan outside of Obamacare. Great. We just took that off the table, even though it's outside of open enrollment. What if it was open enrollment? Well, we just took it off the table. We know that of the two options, Obamacare or non-Obamacare, we're now going to be looking at non-Obamacare plans, right? And we did a good enough job qualifying them up front to determine that. So we pretty much know the answer to the question when we ask, does it make sense why you wouldn't want to go with an Obamacare plan? Yes, it makes sense because I'm healthy and because, you know, I make too much money to get a subsidy, right? All right. So now, once you've got them committed to a non-Obamacare plan, now there are two options when choosing a plan outside of Obamacare. I can build you an airtight case for why you should buy short-term medical, just as easy as I can build you an airtight case as to why you should buy limited medical, okay? But maybe they would have told me up front as I was qualifying them, is there anything specific you're looking for in a health insurance plan? Yeah, I want my doctor visits covered, I want, my, my, my annual physical covered, I want some blood work covered, you know, and I want to have coverage when I go to the hospital. Great. Limited medical all day. All right. Now there's two options when choosing a plan outside of Obamacare. You have short term medical. Okay. And you have what's called defined medical. You want to steer clear of short term medical for the simple reason that it's short term, right? By definition, it is a short term plan. In other words, if you get sick halfway through the plan, once the policy expires, you're left without coverage and you're uninsurable at that point. Does that make sense? Ask, throw that in there. Does that make sense why you wouldn't want to go with a short-term plan? Because it has an expiration date? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Great. Your only option left is a defined medical, which is a permanent plan. The benefit levels are defined, okay? Uh, and this is what I'm going to go ahead and run a quote for you. Okay, let me go over these levels with you. Let me go over the benefit levels with you. Okay, this is a plan with Philadelphia American, which offers the best defined medical plan on the market. They've been in business since 1928. It's a nationwide PPO network, zero deductible plan, $5 million lifetime maximum, 20 doctor visits covered per year, one wellness visit, prescription benefits of $10 for your generics, 20 for your brand names, two times the Medicare surgery schedule and an annual maximum of a half a million. The price for you is 250. If you don't know what I'm doing when I'm going through those selling points and those bullet points, the answer is on the AHBT University in the carrier trainings and the presentation trainings. Okay, you wanna present the plan in a Boom, 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 you know, seven, eight of the best bullets to the plan. Boom, 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 PPO network, zero deductible, half a million dollar annual max, 20 doctors a year, wellness visits, double the Medicare surgery schedule, and the price is 250 per month, okay? And then you shut up. You present it, you put the price in their hand, you shut up and you listen for your next cue which the next step would be closing the deal, right? But you've built your case all the way through, okay? So that's limited medical. What if you're gonna present short-term medical? Starts the exact same way. While I'm pulling up this quote for you, let me just briefly give you an idea of what's available on the health insurance market. I'm gonna educate them. First, you have Obamacare. 
Obamacare is what people buy if they need a plan that covers pre-existing. Now the challenges you'll run into is the cost and the premiums are high and the networks are brutal. 90% of the plans on the marketplace are HMOs, which means you can't pick and choose your doctors and hospitals. Would it make sense for you to go with an option that you can pick and choose your doctors and hospitals? A plan outside of the marketplace. Yes, it would make sense. Great. The two options you have outside of the marketplace is uh, one is a, uh, a short-term medical plan, and the, the second is what's called a defined medical plan. Now, you want to steer clear of a defined medical plan for one reason. There's no out-of-pocket maximum. So you could have a $500,000 claim, and even though your insurance does what it's supposed to do and covers 80% of the bill, and still be left with $100,000 in bills. With a short-term medical plan, the right short-term medical plan, your plan will act very much as a major medical. The two best short-term meds on the market today, United Healthcare and National General. Okay, National General uses the Aetna PPO network. Let's take a look at National General because they're usually a little bit less expensive. All right. Again, it's an Aetna PPO network. You'll have unlimited co-pays uh, to the urgent care for $50. Uh, you get a maximum uh, out-of-pocket out maximum of $250 for any accident or injury. You'll have 100% coverage for hospitalization, and everything else is subject to a deductible of $5,000. The plan is $300 per month. Now, that sounds like a pretty good package, right? If you haven't done any of the other training, you're probably thinking, well, shit, that's a, that's a money package right there. Maximum out-of-pocket of $250 for uh, doctors, or excuse me, accidents. $250 max out of pocket for accidents and injuries, 100% coverage for hospitalization. Well, what I'm doing is I'm selling a high deductible plan, high deductible short-term med plan, 5K deductible short-term med plan specifically, and I'm adding a supplement called the plan enhancer. And, I, and I'm covering that deductible in the event of accidents and hospitalization. And again, all that information is at the, you know, in the HPT University, all right? But, you know, customer, I asked the customer up front, I said, what's important to you in terms of a health insurance plan? And they said, catastrophic coverage. I don't need to cover, I can pay for the doctor visits, I can pay for this, I can pay for that. I want coverage for the major stuff. And that's why I went short term. And I built my airtight case as to why short term makes the most sense. Because it defines an out of pocket maximum for you. The worst case scenario on this plan, you have a bill for five grand. You know, if you're diagnosed with cancer and you're not hospitalized, right? They just do outpatient treatment, right? You're gonna have a bill of 5,000. Now you can sell critical illness and cover that. We'll talk about that in a little bit here, all right? But that's how you make your presentations, all right? You, it's two parts. You wanna educate them and then you wanna prescribe to them, okay? Why, would, why is a limited med plan better than a short term? Because it's permanent. It doesn't expire. Why is a short term better than a limited med plan? Because it's a major medical. It's got a defined maximum out of pocket of X, 5,000, 10,000. And then you're covered up to a very large umbrella amount, usually a million dollars a year. All right. A limited med plan has no maximum out of pocket. So that's why a limited med med's better than a short-term med, and that's why a short-term med is better than a limited med, all right? But build your case, okay? And get them to the point that you want them at, all right? Does that make sense? Presentation training, uh, or that, that's the presentation for when you're presenting your product. So now we've, we've, we've done a good intro, right? Based on the different lead source that we're calling. We've qualified them properly, and we've learned that we have a customer that is uh, right up our alley, right? They're healthy. Uh, they either have no insurance or they have a plan that I know I can beat, right? So now I'm going to present to them. Uh, I'm going to, um, you know, if they don't tell me anything is important, you know, hey, what's important to you in health insurance? I don't, I just need, I just need something, right? If you get that, right, then you're going to sell what you believe is best. Do you think Philadelphia American is better? Learn the product. Do you think National General is better? Learn the product. I can go either way with it. I've sold a ton of National General. I've sold a ton of Philadelphia American. I love them both. I personally have Philadelphia American. 
Okay, that's what I personally have. And I, I love it. My wife loves it. My kids love it. We just got all my wife and kids wellness checkups got all done this year already. And my cut my plan covered everything in full. And I even got reimbursed uh, 46 and 38. I got about 85 bucks back. Not a bad, not a bad deal, right? The way those benefits work. Okay, so if somebody wants catastrophic, you go NatGen. Somebody wants doctor visits covered, you go Philly. They tell you, hey, you're the you're the professional. You tell me what's best. I can go either way with it. To me, it depends what you know makes the most sense. It's, it comes down to what makes the most sense to you guys. Which plan you are passionate about selling? What you believe is the best? What you would buy for your family? Okay, they're both great carriers, great service, great coverage. I, I can argue both of them all day long. All right. So that's the presentation. What do we got here? Overcoming objections. All right. This is more for the objections that you're going to get on the upfront. The two most common objections you're going to hear. I don't have time for this. Right. Or I already have health insurance. Those are the two most common objections you, you're going to hear. On any lead source that you call, right, you're going to hear these objections continuously. I already have coverage, don't bother me, or you know what, I just don't have time right now, right? Like maybe I'd be interested, but I just don't have time to talk to you right now, all right? And you'll tell them like this, I assume you had coverage already. Let me ask you, do you pay for that coverage on your own? In other words, is it an individual plan or is it a group plan? right? How much money would I have to save you on a monthly basis for this conversation to be worth your time? Assuming that money is the, you know, is the motivating factor for them to talk to you, they want to save some money, right? Some people might say, no, I love my health insurance. Uh, it's not about the money for me. It's about the coverage, which is odd. It's a great client to have. We like those clients that buy on value instead of premium, but the reality is most people choose their insurance. Price is a big factor. It's probably the number one factor when people are choose, uh, choosing their insurance. Whether it's health insurance or life insurance or car insurance, they want the best deal, right? So you go after the price play. Let me ask you, you know, I know you have coverage. You know, I assumed you did. You know, if I could save you 30, 40%, would this conversation be worth your time and get you great coverage, similar coverage or better coverage than what you currently have? right? Too many agents get these first objections and they hang up right away. Okay. You know, asking the second question and trying to overcome the objection is equally as important as knowing exactly how the lead was generated and how to go into the call. It can be the difference between, uh, you know, this much success or this much success. All right, you have to ask those questions. All right, so important. Ask the follow-up question when you get shot down. And listen, if they say, no, you pushy bastard, and hang up on you, are you any worse off than you were 30 seconds before you asked it? You already didn't get the opportunity to earn their business. They already gave your objection. If you ask one more question and they shoot you down again, are you any worse off? Are your feelings going to be hurt? Are you going to lose sleep over it? My guess is no is the answer to all those questions, right? So ask the extra question, all right? That's great you already, here's another option. That's great you already have coverage. Um, <clears throat> does the coverage that you have now, uh, does the coverage that you have work for you? Does your current plan include any zero deductible features? Okay, guy says, I have insurance. I'm really happy with it. That's great. So your plan clearly works for you. Let me ask you, does your policy include zero deductible features? Zero deductible features is a, um, it's a terminology that I came up with, you know, probably five years ago when I was selling supplemental products uh, along with high major med plans, right? High deductible major med plans, right? I was, you know, telling the customers, I would say, you know, here's, this is your major med plan. This is your zero deductible feature or low deductible feature. In other words, this product over here covers your deductible on your major med plan, 
So if you have a $5,000 deductible, I'm giving you a $5,000 accident and critical illness plan to cover that deductible. And I, and I use the lingo zero deductible features, you know, because it just was bet, it was easier for people to understand than supplemental products or add-on products or extra coverage, right? Those are not words that people want to hear. They, they hear extra coverage, what are they thinking? Extra money, right? They hear add-ons or supplemental policies, they don't hear that, they hear more money. So when they hear zero deductible features, right? Like this is truly a benefit to you because it will cover your high deductible. They weren't, you know, they were a lot less likely to question it. All right, so it's terminology that I came up with, zero deductible features. So, you know, I understand you have health insurance, Mr. Joan. Uh, you know, let me ask you, does your policy include any zero deductible features? Well, what's that? Oh, well, those are benefits to cover your deductible for you. Do you have a high deductible? What's your deductible now? Well, it's five grand, six grand. Great. If you're hospitalized or you have an accident or injury or a critical illness, do you have to pay that deductible or do you have something in place to pay that deductible for you? It's a sub pitch, right? Or you might say, yeah, they tell you I already have health insurance. You might say, that's great you have health insurance to pay the doctors and hospitals in the event of a sickness or an injury. Do you have anything that will pay you directly if that were to happen? Again, a sub pitch or a critical illness pitch, all right? The best insurance agents will sell a ton of critical illness. If you've ever sold life insurance and you believe in life insurance, you're gonna believe in critical illness insurance because the truth is 78% of the cancer cases today are people are surviving, okay? If a cancer is caught in stage one or two, there's a 78% chance that that person survives. But now, hey, great, I just beat cancer, right? I just beat, you know, I had a heart attack and I survived, or I had a stroke and I survived, but because I couldn't work when I was recovering, I'm, I'm up to my ears in debt. I'm three months behind on my mortgage. The cars are about to be repoed. I'm, I'm, I'm doing better health-wise, but my finances are in turmoil now. And that's what critical illness insurance covers. The, the main health insurance plan pays the doctors and hospitals. That's great. What do you have to pay you if, God forbid, something like that happens? Are you going to be able to work and run your business if you have cancer or if you have a heart attack, if you have stroke? You don't know. You could be in rehab for three months. All right. So those are opportunities for you to do a sub pitch. All right. I don't have time right now. I don't have time to talk right now. I get it. I know I'm just calling you out of the blue. Let me ask you real quick. Do you pay for your own health insurance? Get the commitment. Yeah, yeah, I do pay for my own health insurance. Someone says I don't have time right now, but they answer that question and say, yes, I do have an individual plan. Okay. You got them. You're gonna earn their, you're gonna earn the opportunity to earn your. You're gonna have the opportunity to earn their business when they have time. They might not know it at that moment, but you do, right? I get it, I just called you out of the blue. Let me ask you real quick. Do you pay for your own health insurance? Yeah, I do. Do you like the price? Is it expensive? Ah, it's always expensive, isn't it? Everybody's overpaying for insurance, aren't they? Because it's a brand new plan that just hit the market where we're literally, you know, we can set the amount of benefits based on your budget. You tell me what you want to pay for in health insurance, I'll tell you how much coverage you can get. I can run this quote in less than a minute. You know, you can speed up the process, gather the, I just need a couple minutes of your time to get this information to you. If you I, I know you don't have time right now, but I, I need a minute. You know, if I can have a minute, I can get this quote out to you. We can set up a later date to talk. So you're not gonna, that, and that's gonna happen a lot, okay? The, the I don't have time right now to go over this is going to happen a lot, all right? So you gotta be quick to get the quote to them. You gotta be able to work on these systems on the computer, you know, rapidly. You know, let me get this information out to you and, and then you set the follow-up appointment. When do you think you'll have an opportunity to look at it, Mr. Jones? Oh, I'll look at it, you know, tonight with my wife or give me the weekend to look at it, great. 
You need the weekend to look at it. How about I follow up with you on Monday? I've got some time at one o'clock or six o'clock. What works best for you? That's sales 101, right guys? Most of you become insurance agents because you've got some sales experience, right? And if you don't, that's fine too. You know, but the, I, would, I would be willing to bet that most insurance agents have some sales experience in some, you know, other industry, maybe insurance, you know. So you set the follow-up appointment. Give them a couple options. What worked best for you? Well, what time works best for you? Okay. And you play the follow-up game. All right. So these are the most common objections you're going to get. Okay. Um, you know, some of the other scripts that we have, we, we, we took out a lot of scripts in lead master, uh, yesterday, cause I'm going to replace them with those scripts there. And uh, we'll have that loaded in the lead master here shortly, but I'll go ahead and email everybody on this training. I'll go ahead and email you guys these scripts. So you have them. And I may have already done that before the meeting, but I can send them again. Um, so in the AHBT library, under files and resources, you're gonna go to agent scripts. And I will have all of those. Oh, I already do have them in there. All right, cool. All right, so it got done. So those scripts are in there, they're in Lead Master. All right, so these are the scripts we went over, okay? Now, someone says, you know, I don't have time, right? Or you give the presentation in its entirety and you get the quote and the customer gives you an objection that you can't, you can't overcome at that point, you know, because, you know, let's get one call closes are common with internet leads, live transfers. If you're calling um, uh, B leads or you're calling um, free leads, I should say, if you're calling the free leads or you're calling the you know 90 day old internet leads or the 90 day old telemarketed leads the one call close is less common it's a follow-up game it's a two call close and beyond remember 27 contacts the fortune is in the follow-up all right so i've got a follow-up script here it's really self-explanatory all right uh hey it's true with bmt how you doing listen i'm following up on the health insurance court i sent you have you had a chance to review it yet most of the time they're going to say no i haven't looked at it no problem, let's go over it together, all right? Prospect tells you, no, I don't have time to discuss it right now. No worries, Joe, I understand you're busy. Uh, I spend my days working with small business owners, so I totally get it. Uh, when do you think would be a good time to talk about this information? The best way to go about it, uh, Joe, is to have yourself and your wife, whoever the decision makers are, in front of the computer at, uh, you know, at, at the time that's best for you. You know, you don't wanna tell them, five o'clock on Friday is the only time we can do it, right? Um, you know, but the best thing to do is to have you in front of a computer, you and your wife or just yourself, have you in front of a computer. We can go over the benefits together. You guys can send out the official quote from either Philly or NatGen or UHC. The official quote comes from their, their platform and then you can walk them through it. Let's go ahead and go over it together. Let's go over the benefits. Let's, you know, continue to continue to stress to them why you went with this plan. You know, remember you said Obamacare is not the best option for you. You agreed. You didn't want to pay a lot of money. You didn't want a, a you know, HMO network. Remember you said that, um, you know, you understood that a short-term medical expires and, and you didn't want to be put in the position where you couldn't get the policy renewed and you were uninsurable. You wanted to go with a permanent plan. Well, this is the best permanent limited medical on the market. Let's go over the benefits and go over how the plan works with you. All right, and then you want to get good at presenting the plan and the benefits. Let's shop the, not the, the network of doctors and hospitals. Do you have a primary care physician that you want me to look up? You go that extra mile for them and you close the deal, but you got to drive the presentations, okay? It's about activity and getting people to that point, all right? And you're going to find a lot along the way, you're going to find a lot of people along the way that are just too nice to tell you, this is not going to, you know, they're too nice to tell you, I don't want to deal with it. I'm done. Right. They're just too nice. I don't want to deal with it. 
You know, they keep telling you, oh, I haven't looked at it yet, or oh, I haven't looked at it yet, oh, this and that, right? And if you keep following up with that person, what's going to happen is when it comes time for them to purchase health insurance, they're going to purchase it from you, guaranteed, all right, guaranteed. All right, so this follow-up game is something that you need to do on a regular basis. The best lead that you're gonna work out of all the leads that we have and all the different lead sources and all the different approaches, the best lead that you can call is somebody that you've already quoted, somebody that you personally have already talked to, somebody that you have already qualified and gotten information about, and you can bring that information back to the presentation in finding their nugget, what's important to them, why you're pitching the plan that you're pitching. All right, but it's in the follow-up, all right? And don't be afraid to ask, um, you know, closing questions, you know, to find your buyers. You guys are gonna wanna find your buyers, okay? Hey, Mr. Jones, you know, I've called you several times. I know, you, you know, I haven't looked at the policy yet, but I know in initially you told me that uh, you know, if we could save you some money, which it looks like we're doing, uh, that you would be open to doing business with us. Let me ask you, uh, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, obviously you're not a 10, but on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, this is something you know you got to get done. One being you couldn't care less. Where do you land? You know, my rule of thumb on that is a five and above. You know, that's a good lead. You keep calling them every single day that you have them on your schedule. Okay, four and under, you might want to say, okay, so you're a three, you know, is, is there anything we can get, anything we can do, what would we have to do to get you to be a five, six, seven, or eight, right? What could we do? I don't just, I don't, I don't think there's anything you can do. I just, I don't want to deal with it, right? I'm just not, now's not a good time. No problem. Can I have your word that you won't do business with anybody else uh, in the next 30 days? And I'll give you a call in 30 days and we'll see where you're at. Yeah, you have my word. I won't do business with anybody else. You got them, you have them. It's just a matter of when. And sometimes it's about, you know, what's convenient. It, oh, well, let me rephrase that. 100% of the time, it's gonna be about when it's convenient for them to do it, all right? So the way, the reason that agents fail in this game is because they call leads and they don't actually understand what a lead is. They think that every single lead that they call should be sitting by the phone waiting for their phone call and 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 once that you know once that call comes they're gonna you know let you give your spiel that's what they think that's what agents think you know and i, I hope i've been uh, done a good job at stressing that that lead source doesn't exist even when we generate organic leads off of our ads that we create it's still not a golden lead source because you don't know what you know, their budget is, they might just be entering to win a free trip. We don't know what their budget is. We don't know what their health insurance situation is. We don't know if we can help them. We got to call them and we got to qualify them and we got to figure it out. But if you make the calls, you will find people that you can help. You'll find people that are open to doing business with you. You'll find people that, uh, you know, will eventually call you back to do business with you but it's a numbers game, it's marketing. It's marketing. You gotta market yourself. We talked about this uh, you know, a little bit uh, during the meeting. This game is all marketing. Okay, the best thing you can do is talk to as many people every single day and tell them what you do and how you can help them. That's the best piece of marketing you could have. Right now it does you no good, uh, you know, and you probably don't have the money to do it, to go put a, you know, a three five thousand dollar a month billboard out in the highway in your city. Okay, if you've got forty grand to throw into your marketing this year, maybe that you know, maybe that'll be profitable your first year. But most agents don't come with you know an extensive marketing budget. So what do you got to do? You got to get on the phones. You got to dig in. You got to find your buyers. All right. So your follow up script very simple. Hey, I'm, I'm following up on the quote I sent you. Let's go over it, all right? You don't have time to go over it right now? When do you have time? 
look, Mr. Jones, this is the fourth time I've called you. I, I definitely don't want to waste your time. Certainly don't want to waste my time. Uh, you know, when can we go over this together? When can I have 10 minutes to explain this product to you, why it's the best, and then go ahead and do the application and see if we can get you approved, okay? Critical illness script. Um, we talked about selling critical illness standalone, right? Somebody's totally happy with their health insurance. It's a critical illness presentation, okay? Critical illness is sold very emotionally, like life insurance, okay? Mr. Jones, I understand you have health insurance to pay the doctors and hospitals. What do you have in place to pay yourself directly in the event of a chronic illness? Mr. Jones, have you ever known anyone who was diagnosed with a chronic illness? Do you happen to know if their financial situation was affected because of that diagnosis? Mr. Jones, do you think if you were diagnosed with a chronic illness that your finances would be affected? Mr. Jones, did you know that 50% of all people will at some point in their lives be diagnosed with a chronic illness? Knowing that stat, Mr. Jones, when that day comes, not if, but when that day comes, would you prefer that I send you a get well card or a check in the mail for 50 grand? Critical illness insurance is a plan that pays you directly in the event of being diagnosed with a chronic illness. People survive 78% of the cancer cases when caught in stage one or two. The number one cause of bankruptcy in the US is a critical illness. Having a critical illness plan in, the pl in, the, in place ensures that you can continue your lifestyle and continue to provide for your family while you're fighting for your life. There will be plenty of stress about, uh, there will be plenty to stress about when that day comes. Let's not make finances one of them. I think that speaks for itself, right? When you call a lead and they tell you, you know, you know, kick rocks, I'm good, I don't need it, right? And you come in and you ask them, right, that's cool, man. I, you know, I applaud you for having health insurance. And I assume your health insurance pays the doctors and hospitals when God forbid something goes wrong. Do you have anything in place to pay you directly when that day comes? All right. And you go into the spiel and you sell the critical illness very emotionally. All right, that's critical illness presentation. Uh, this is an after sales script, something that Joe put together, um, which is good tools. Uh, you know, with health insurance today, we have to constantly to review to make sure that you're in the right spot. That's why we'll review in November. It's good to let your customers know, and you can even tell them before you close them. Use it as a closing tool because again, you're, 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 uh, you're selling yourself and your service before you're selling any plan, right? So you can use this line as a closing tool like, hey, you know, just because this plan makes the most sense for you today doesn't mean it's gonna make the most sense for you even this year during open enrollment. Certainly doesn't mean it's gonna make the most sense for you a couple, two, three years down the road when our government will more than likely uh, change our healthcare system yet again, right? If you don't pay attention to politics, you know, you got to start listening, right? Every single Democratic candidate right now wants to change our healthcare system again, all right? And, and our current president wants to change our healthcare system again, okay? So do you think that maybe inevitably our healthcare system is going to change yet again? Let the customers know, I want to be your agent today. I want to be your agent during open enrollment. And I want to be your agent when our government inevitably changes our healthcare system again. Okay. Uh, if you have a claim, please call me. We will help you with the process. Stress to them. And you can use this as a closing tool. This isn't just after the sale's done. These are, these are, these are things that I tell people prior to them being customers in, in order to help me close the deal. Listen, I'm your agent. I am not a call center agent that's gonna be laid off in February. I am a career health insurance broker. I will walk you through the process of submitting claims. I can help you change your billing information. I can help you change your address. There's a lot that I can do for you. I will be the concierge between you and the insurance company. You never have to call the insurance company again. You can deal through me. People love hearing that, man, especially in our industry, because there's so many agents out there that just sell the policy and then get, you know, never, never followed up with the service end. 
if you want to be successful in this game and you're building your own block of business, you need to follow it up with the service end. Okay. Remember, Mr. Jones, I don't work for the insurance companies. I work for you. I want to be your agent for life. That's a good line. Okay. As long as you have individual health insurance needs, I want to be your guy. Um, and then the last one, payments are split up, so you'll be billed smaller amounts, but they'll add up to the price that I quoted you. That's important to let people know, because the way we sell is we bundle sell. Our average customer buys three policies from us. They buy the health plan, a critical illness plan, and a dental plan, or the health plan, an accident plan, and a critical illness plan, or the health plan, an accident plan, and a dental plan. You get the point. They buy multiple policies. It doesn't come out of their bank account in one bill. It comes out itemized. So you're better off letting them know that up front. So when they see the bill coming out of their, it just saves you, uh, uh, you know, an explanation later. You tell them up front, hey, just so you understand, this is four policies total. So you're going to see that on your bill. You're going to see four withdrawals and actually five withdrawals initially because there's an app fee, right? So you're going to see those withdrawals, but it's all going to total the one price that I gave you. Okay, um, so we have that script available. What other scripts do we have here? After sales script, what is this? New script, I don't even know what this is. Subscript, okay, so a supplement script. Okay, so a supplement script to cover their out of pocket on their major med plan. Okay, hey, is this ABC Trucking? My name is Drew with Benefits Management. I specialize in health insurance for self employed. Client already have health insurance. I understand most people I talk to have covered, uh, this is, look at how old this is, with a 2016 plan. Let me just ask you real quick, is that an individual plan or a group plan? It's a group plan, gotcha. High deductibles with group. Do you have anything to cover your deductible? Uh, I have an individual plan. Average individual policy, 6K deductible. You guys can read through it, it's a subscript, okay? Someone tells you they already have coverage, you're looking for an opportunity to get them coverage to cover their out-of-pocket, okay? Your best bet is going into a critical illness presentation. You know, sell some standalone critical illness, you guys will absolutely make a fortune. Don't forget, critical illness is the highest commissionable product that, you know, that is sold in the health insurance portfolio. Critical illness is the highest, all right? So you want to add that for every policy. And when I, I add it on to everything we sell, you know, and I tell customers like this, I say, there is a, I'm adding this policy to fill a gap. I'm adding the critical illness policy to fill the gap of your finances if, God forbid, something major happens. Because the health insurance plan is just going to pay the doctors and hospitals. It's not going to do anything for you, okay? The health insurance plan isn't going to pay you directly in the event of having a heart attack. It's the critical illness plan that's going to pay you. So you can continue paying the mortgage, the phone bill. You think your utility company cares uh, if you had a critical illness or not? Or are they going to shut your water off because you haven't paid? You might get a little sympathy from them, but you're probably not going to get much, right? So critical illness, very important. All right, guys, so that, I know there's a, that's a lot of information. It's an hour and a half of me rambling. Um, you know, I'm gonna assume you guys have some questions. So I'll go ahead and unmute everybody. And if you have questions, feel free to fire away. Somebody's jamming out. So we don't catch you before you're ready. Hey. 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 Hey.
and uh, let us know where we can help in your business. Get your contracting done, get some more training done at the university. And as soon as you get some writing numbers, you guys are ready to rock and roll and get on those phones, and get out in the community and uh, start marketing your services. All right, guys, everybody have a great day. Talk to you all soon.